Now, one of the doctors behind this project is Itumaleng Funani, co-director of health systems enablement and innovation from the FITS Health Consortium. Dr. Funani, very good morning. Thank you for speaking to us. If you listen carefully to the one lady that spoke, and she talked about the benefits of having an oncology center in Mpumalanga, based on the fact that she had to travel hundreds of kilometers uh, in a frail state and had to literally beg for accommodation. What is the impact of this facility for residents, particularly cancer patients in Mpumalanga? Thanks, Hugo, for the opportunity. Good morning to your viewers. I mean, no one there has captured the problem very well. I think when we talk about uh, this constitution and ensuring that citizens have got access to dignified health services, that is exactly what she says. You cannot have very sick people getting on a bus mm. for accessing basic services, being on the bus for 300, 400 kilometers, waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. So what we've done in partnering with the Department of Health in Pumalanga, we took the academic uh, entity, which is the Health Systems Enablement and Innovation, and we then called oncologists that we have worked with in KZN. The model was tested at Ingose Albert Lutu, the central hospital, where they also had an oncology crisis. So, so we learned there, we cut our teeth, where they had infrastructure, but no doctors. We provided that solution. Having done that successfully and transitioned back to the province, we then moved to Pumalanga, where there actually was no service. And I think the vision for us is the development of a tertiary services platform where specialist services can be provided for rural services. It was quite a, a moving speech from Nolwanze. I'm happy to be part of a service that will ensure that South African citizens in rural provinces, through partnership with the university, can access service so that they can have a dignified uh, experience in terms of access to health services. Now, what has the impact of COVID been on this operation or, or similar that you, that you carry out? Yeah, I mean, we started uh, in August 2019, so we've done a full year. Over that period of time, we've seen over 3,000 patients that used to go to Steve Biko. So the impact has been at two levels. One, in terms of the budget, the Department of Health has saved quite a lot of money in terms of travel, ferrying those uh, patients to Steve Biko Academic Hospital. It actually came in quite handy because during the COVID time, it was going to be a crisis to have to shuttle such large numbers of patients with social distancing. But when you speak to the patient on the ground, they are appreciative because they wake up in the morning, don't have to be out of the province for a long period. But for me, the biggest impact is their families because cancer is a very emotive issue. Sometimes you can see that the patient is coming at the last stage and all you can do is palliation. Those people need to be close to their families so that the end of life is dignified. Now imagine if then your family member is in Pretoria, you're in Pumalanga, you have financial issues, you can't go and visit, you don't know what happened. So over and above accessing services for those who are living and where the cancer can be dealt with, those that are at the terminal stage of life can be with their families, including those that are going to be admitted now in hospital, their families can come and visit them. So I think the impact on the ground, both at the departmental level in terms of saving the budget is immense, but also in terms of socially, the family and the support structures, we feel that this is going to make a difference. It is just but one part, Hugo, as it is providing chemotherapy and the department then is in the quest for ensuring that late next year, there is access to radiation treatment, which will complete the picture where there will be no one who has to go to Steve Vigo. Currently, those who need radiation treatment still have to go to Steve Vigo, and that's what we are working on on phase two. So at this point, the only service that you are offering is chemotherapy. Is that the only service uh, that cancer patients would require outside of uh, radiation? It's, it's screening uh, where you screen and you can advise. Some of them are surgical interventions where the cancer, if it's early stages, can be completely removed. So we do have specialist surgeons that are doing that. But where the cancer is very advanced and some of our people are presenting quite late, 
you do need then the radiation treatment so that you can uh, treat the cancer, minimize it so that it doesn't affect the organs, for example, spread to the other organs. So we do have screening for preventative services. People can come for mammography and then there's resection of the tumor where appropriate. And the last stage then will be the treatment through radiation treatment. Now you raise an interesting issue, Dr. Funani, and that's the issue of, of screening. Now we do know that a lot of information is available publicly, certainly for, for women to check themselves for uh, breast cancer, uh, men for, for prostate cancer as well. Now, what about other cancers? How do you screen for those? And what, is your, what are your words for people to generally get themselves checked? Yeah, you've mentioned even in our work in Pumalanga, we are picking up that those are the most common cancers. However, in women, uh, we mustn't forget that there's cancer of the cervix, which is also playing a significant role. And I think uh, generally, if you go to any health facility, uh, once you are of a certain age, you are advised to start screening for all the cancers that are common uh, in your age group and in your population. And some of them are linked to family history. So it would be important then to know your family history so that you are fast tracked into the appropriate uh, line so where you have high risk uh, of getting cancer. And I mean, interestingly, it's not only the Rock Ferreira Hospital. Uh, the MEC did indicate that she would like to have each district have its services. In April, the Premier of Mpumalanga opened a chemotherapy facility in Wheatbank. So you'll find that two of the three districts in Mpumalanga already have basic cancer services. And we're hoping that we will do the third one around MLO, which will say people even within the Mpumalanga area don't have to travel uh, large distances to, to, to access services which is what we're looking at, and that's the research we are doing uh, in partnership with Bristol Myers Group Foundation of a decentralized cancer model where people can be picked up as close as possible to their clinics and their homes and then referred appropriately across the health uh, system referral. Well, brilliant work that you've done with this initiative in Mpumalanga. So what is, what is the next project? Because the incidence of, of cancer obviously is, is pretty high in, in, in South Africa. Look, the lessons we've learned, Hugo, are that South Africa needs uh, to innovate and we've brought some innovation in terms of this solution. For example, bringing a university brings a long-term sustainable model because university will always be there. Funani might retire and leave, but there will be youngsters that are working in the university and the division who will ensure sustainability. What we want is to show rural provinces that you can actually develop a tertiary services platform and have specialists coming to your province. So that, for me, is the long-term message. And linked to that, we're hoping that once the service is stable and there's radiation treatment, we can start training registrars who are specialists in oncology through the VES University. That will rotate between Johannesburg, Charlotte Matraike, and Rob Ferreira and other hospitals so that we can leave a lasting legacy because if you don't start developing a pipeline of these specialists, you will run into the same problems 10 years from now. So, so for me, the exciting project, once we have the radiation machine, is to make sure that Mpumalanga can finance and produce its own oncologies, whereby this solution will not be needed. As we've done in KZN, there was a crisis. We stepped in. We transitioned back. KZN now has got their own oncologies. And in Mpumalanga, we want to do the same. And hopefully other provinces like Northwest and rural provinces that may need the service can partner with us. Because if you're thinking of moving into national health insurance, you do need innovation because South Africa doesn't have enough skills uh, specialists. Most of them are sitting in the private sector. As an academic institution, we have a mechanism of pulling them out of the private sector into the public sector so that it can benefit the entire population. Dr. Funani, fantastic work that you're doing. Thank you so much for your time this morning. That was Dr. Itumaleng Funani, who is the co-director of Health Systems Enablement and Innovation from the WITS Health Consortium.